Today, we have the most comprehensive official leak of Nintendo Switch 2 information that you've ever seen up to this point. This is not a drill. This is not a rumor. This is fact-based information that comes directly from not just a reliable source. Oh, we're not talking about a reliable source. We're talking from the companies actually involved in manufacturing the damn system. That's right. This is manufacturing related leaks in a very, very specified way that, by the way, is all publicly verifiable. That's what's so insane about this. These are real leaks. These are not something that we're just throwing out to the wind and hoping and dreaming, although we'll put some speculation and some of our thoughts in with it. Now, because of the nature of this stuff, I want to provide a lot of context behind how we got this information. And I also want to make sure that you guys don't have to go through that context if you want the leaks. You're just here for the info and you want it. So we're going to put timestamps down below to let you skip through this video to what you want. But I do believe that context matters. And because I believe that context matters, there's some context we need to get into. So let's go ahead and tell you how this stuff happened. So the backstory behind this is that a while back, there was this unreliable leaker. He's still around. He goes by Connor over on X. And he's easy to really ignore a lot of the time. He's not exactly a huge follower account for starters. And it's been proven that you could pretty much just DM him information and he'll post it as a leak without ever verifying any of it. So he's pretty unreliable, but he has occasionally put things up that turned out to be true because he just kind of posts whatever he finds. And the interesting part here is one of his posts that he put up was a Switch 2 leak post that contains some interesting information, an image uh, that seemed to be from some sort of shipping report, but you don't really know. But this, here's the thing. The data from that image was then Googled and a whole website that Connor was using to find that shipping data was discovered. Shipping data itself is actually publicly available information. Now, it's easy enough for shipping data to be uh, pretty vague. As an example, there's data in the shipping stuff about the Nintendo Switch 2 screen, but it's basically just confirming it's a, it's a touchscreen, and that's it. There's not, like, any exact details on what type of screen, 1080p, OLED, any of that stuff. So that is pretty standard. A lot of shipping details can be quite vague. But if you dig through, you can sometimes find out exact part details, including part numbers and everything else, and even differentiate between what would be dev kits and what would be retail units. And this could be done by cross-referencing all of this stuff with the stuff that they had for Switch years ago. So when we're talking about what the Switch dev kits were versus the Switch retail stuff, you can cross-reference all this and really sort out what stuff is not only for Switch 2, but what stuff is for dev kits and what stuff is for final retail units. Now, this is really, really fascinating because this information has been out there for a while, but the websites work in this interesting way because the data is updated during the first week of the month, and it's usually about two months old shipping data. So it's not literally what just happened the week prior. It's from two months ago, at least from the websites that were able to dig this information up on. So the date we do talk about in this video actually is shipping information that was published this month, but it's from shipments that were made in March. Now, these shipments are parts that are moving between manufacturers and major companies to obviously put the system together. Now, one reason why we're able to look all this up is because we do know, and we have now have confirmation that the actual component, the main you know, chip inside the switch is the T239. It's been rumored for a long time, but this shipping data it essentially, not essentially, it literally confirms that is what the chip is. That is what the code for it is behind the scenes. There's also some references to potentially some stuff that might mean Odin as a possible code name for maybe even the system, let alone everything else. But that's still, that goes into the realm of speculation based off this data. But here's the thing. We actually know exact information about the system and 
We also know other things that are at least inferred by the data or implied by that data. So let's go ahead and get into this. First off, we need to make sure we give credit to the people who have been doing all the incredible work on this stuff, who have been really digging through this. And that belongs to users over at Famiboards, users such as Luigi Blood and this other user named LIC. They have been the ones doing the primary digging through this data, although others have been digging through it as well just to find it for themselves and confirm and all of this stuff, including myself. I've been spending multiple hours this morning trying to dig through and verify all this stuff, and man, it's it's out there. It's there. Easier to find if you have like a premium subscription to their dang uh, shipping website, but it can be found without it. It just is a lot harder to sift through, but the data is actually there. So... Here's another thing we want to get into. The reason it took so long for people to realize that these leaks existed is because Famiboards has been talking about all of this stuff mostly, for the most part, in hidden posts, which can only be read if you are a member of the board. Now, you guys might know I got banned there a long time ago. The thing about that, though, is they are still a public forum, so I never really understood the idea of the hidden post thing. Anyways, it doesn't really matter, right? The point is the information is now out there. They have unhid the post that had the information because they literally, the moment the post went up, it already leaked out because, again, they're a public forum. Technically, none of it is private, but they can pretend all they want. The bottom line is I want to give them credit because they have put a lot of legwork into this stuff. So what information do we have? Well, this is where we get into the real leaks stuff that we have, a lot of information. First, let's dive into the stuff you may have already seen shared. This is stuff that's been already popularized over the last 12 hours, but there's even more information than this. And this is this post by Lick over on Family Boards that comes directly out of the shipping information. It's been confirmed. So the console has 12 gigabytes of RAM. So a lot of speculation. We've had over 8, 12, 16. It is 12 gigabytes in the final retail version of the console and it comes from two individual six gigabyte 7500 mega transfer per second lp ddr5 we do know that it actually is lp ddr5 x because that that transfer speed is not actually possible on the base lp ddr5 and lp ddr5 x is a faster better version of lp ddr5 but in the end the differences between them are not like that big but the transfer speed is something that does confirm it is LPDDR5X. The listing just says LPDDR5, but that could just be the way the listings are done because there isn't a huge difference between the two components. Anyways, the internal storage is 256 gigabytes. Now, this is really, really cool. You know, we were hoping for maybe higher than that, but 256 is a huge leap up from the maximum of 64 gigs that you can get on a Nintendo Switch OLED. So it's still a pretty big leap forward and should be big enough that there's not any individual game that releases that couldn't fit on the storage. Even if you have like a 100 plus gigabyte Call of Duty, it can fit on the internal storage. I think that was a very important thing and probably why Nintendo went with this because some games can be quite large and it's using UFS 3.1. Now, that is initially what is being shared and what is very popular out there is just that post. But we have additional information that we need to get into as well. So this next bit of information comes from another user on the board called Thractor. Uh, he put out there some context. So the RAM part is this one from Micron. They figured out which RAM chip it is, which is a 6 gigabyte 7500 mega transfer, 64-bit part. They list it as LPDDR5, but again, as he notes, it can only technically be LD LPDDR5 X speeds. Uh, so that might be how they're listing. It has a 128-bit bus, and two of these parts would be 12 gigabytes of RAM operating with a peak of 120 gigabytes per second. The UFS is a Kioxia part labeled, as you can see, THG, JFG, T, 1, E, 4, 5, B, A, I, L, H, W, 0. They don't have a specific page for it, but both Mouser and Jack Electronics listed as a 256 gigabyte UFS 3.1 part. Kioxia's website does list a similar one. Um, and it could just be an alternative version. In both cases, there's a good chance Nintendo will be sourcing from multiple suppliers, so they're probably getting it from multiple places. The peak read speeds for UFS 3.1 should be close to two gigabytes per second, although with both game cards and external storage almost lower than that, almost assuredly lower than that, I don't know if games can be quite use it. Still, it definitely should be a bottleneck, so it's probably not going to be two gigabytes per second. Let's just be clear, that is highly, highly unlikely to be 
the case. Now, that is all stuff that you've probably seen out there, but we have additional information. What if I were to tell you that the dock itself may have a fan in it? Yes, I kid you not. We have this post by FWD-BDW saying recently some rumors, unsure if the same source or not, originated from China, alleging the switch to dock will contain a fan. After discussing it with Lick, we didn't consider them to be believable. However, merely hours later, Lick found the following entries in the shipment data. Bracket to assemble radiator fan made mainly of steel. Uh, bracket to tighten radiator fan screws. And then the console cooling fans. Since HGU-1130 seems to be the new dock, the first two entries suggest that a radiator fan is installed in the dock. There also is a second fan part here, brand new fan, possibly for the dock. Um, there's a fan for the system as well. This one here says, newly found. It was not seen before, and this may be intended for the fan that's inside the console. The Nintendo Switch, by the way, does have a fan inside of it. And you might go, well, why the hell do they have a fan inside the dock? There are numerous reasons this could be the case. Uh, the primary reason is obviously just cooling, right? You have a fan in the dock to provide extra cooling. Why would you need extra cooling? Well, it could just so happen to be that whatever the clocking the speeds at in docked mode needs that extra cooling to make the system safe to grab out of docked mode. Remember, when you grab your switch out of dock mode, it's not so hot that it hurts the touch, but if you're clocking the system to a certain level where it could become too hot to touch and handle taking out of a system where people could actually get hurt, one way to deal with that is to be able to use the dock to dissipate that heat so it stays at a comfortable temperature to lift out of the dock. That is a very obvious reason that you would include cooling, and it would be because the speeds are going to clock it at in docked mode are at a point that it re would require the removal of that extra heat. This is actually really good news because it means in docked mode, it could be clocked quite high, which would lead to massive increased performance, also an increased gap between dot mode and handheld mode, but there's also a pretty large gap between dot mode on Switch and handheld mode as well, so it's not really that out of the ordinary, uh, and it, it at least is fascinating that Nintendo seems to be doing this. Remember, this is parts that are being in reference to final retail manufacturing. I find this to be quite fascinating. Now, there are some dimensions that have been out there for quite some time, and I don't want to, uh, I just want, I don't want to put the dimensions out there because they're, they're a little bit speculative based on some of this manufacturing stuff, but I will show you some comparison images that some people have made over on Fami boards to kind of give you an idea of what this feels like or what the size is looking like based on these leaks. And you can see here, like, there's your Switch OLED, and there is what, you know, they're putting the Super Switch name on there. Uh, but you can see that it is a fair bit larger than original Switch. It is smaller than a Steam Deck and doesn't appear to be as chunky with the dimensions that are available in the shipping information uh, based on the shells and everything. But it is a fair bit larger than Switch OLED, which I do find to be interesting. Obviously, the screen having such a big bezel like that, that is just pure uh, speculation, of course, because again, the screen information doesn't really contain that sort of data. Now, we have some additional information as well to go over that also is heavily suggested, if not confirmed, inside these shipments. And so we're just going to go over it and I'll just link you to Fami Boards um, and I'll link you to the website where you can actually dig through this stuff for yourself. You got to know what you're looking for a little bit, but Fami Boards can kind of help you. Uh, figure out like what to enter into the search and, and, and what things to disclude and everything to help you really figure all of this stuff out. But I wanted to provide this information because no one else seems to be talking about it. And I think that it is relevant. Uh, as an example, uh, the chip that supports Amiibo has been discovered to be present in the platform. So Amiibo support will be still there on this new system. It does have an ethernet controller, which essentially means it should have an ethernet jack on the dock. Again, Important to confirm because only Switch OLED has the Ethernet jack. So really nice to see that in, in there. Uh, there's, there is some evidence that it supports HDMI 2.1 of some type. Uh, it's more of an inference than it is a direct fact based on some display controller information. But sure seems that HDMI 2.1 is what they're going to be supporting, which is what you need to do for 4K 60 FPS. Um, other indicators are that there will be a microphone. Uh, so that it would be a new addition because there is no microphone currently. Uh, can't seem to figure out if it's on the controller or on the system from what I can tell. But either way, uh, there seems to be a microphone included. And so that is obviously pretty interesting, whether it's for voice chat purposes or voice commands or some other thing. Who really knows? Uh, various other listings confirm that the use of magnets is present both on both sides of the system itself, the tablet portion and 
on the actual new controllers. You can call them Joy-Con 2s, whatever you want to call them. And they are attached to boards, suggesting like circuit boards, which suggests that they are indeed electromagnets. Why you need magnets on the controllers and the Switch, I don't know. It could be for accessory compatibility reasons. It could be because the controllers could then magnetize to other accessories Nintendo could release later. Uh, and then with the extra magnets on the side, the Switch, it could enable other things. There's just a lot of possibilities here. It looks like all those reports about electromagnets magnets and that being an attachment mechanism of some type does appear to be sort of confirmed. Uh, that is pretty wild. And that is pretty much it for the information, at least up to this point. There is other data out there in the shipping documents, but it's really, really hard to sift through and figure out exactly what some of it is because not all of it is extremely descriptive. Uh, but you can still keep digging and there'll be another update a month from now. May contain more information, may not, because after all, the information we just got from March turns out to be actual retail information and you might not get anything more than that. Now, if you were hoping for clock speeds and wondering how powerful this thing will be, the general sense I seem to be getting from people over on GameFAQ and Reddit, uh, Fami Boards, Reset Era, and other places, even right here on YouTube, seems to be that the original speculated possible performance of the platform that Digital Foundry did multiple videos on, Rich Letterbetter did, uh, it turns out that the specs we're talking about here that seem to be in the final unit are actually bigger and faster than what he was using, which also could explain things, which is why we have those rumors and reports out there about the ray traced matrix demo that was supposedly shown at gamescom last year and how people thought the ray tracing looked better than it did on playstation 5 meanwhile he couldn't even get the demo to run on hypothetical laptop approximated hardware for switch uh 2 where he still to this day was sort of saying hey i don't really think the switch 2 is gonna be capable of this stuff based on my testing but that testing was based on very very limited information it was just the best guess he could do at the moment Here's the truth. The Nintendo Switch 2 is using a fully customized chipset that is not available in any current consumer product in the exact form it is taking. And that is something I've been trying to emphasize this entire time is there is no way to approximate what this is at the level of being able to do any live tests with consumer products at this time because there isn't any consumer product that combines these types of hardware and these types of features together. So when they been reports about this and rumors that this was a fully custom chip, I actually believe that. And that to me is pretty wild and pretty awesome. Uh, this is literally the most comprehensive uh, leak that we've ever had for Switch 2, and I really hope you enjoyed it. Now, here at the end of the video, I just want to dive into something that uh, bothers me a little bit about the way the Switch 2 conversation has been kind of going on on the internet. Uh, a lot of information can be discovered in the Family Boards thread that I linked down below that you guys can go ahead and check out and sift through if you like. Uh, and I don't have a great big issue with most users at Family Boards. I think for the most part, they're just Nintendo fans having a good time enjoying the conversations. But I, I saw a lot of posts over there, and I've been aware of this for a while, that they try to hide a lot of information they're talking about, and then they look down upon anybody outside of Family Boards that discovers the information and decides to talk about it. And I find this just to be a detriment to the entire Nintendo community. I don't think there's anything to be gained by looking down and talking down about other people, other Nintendo fans outside of your community being excited and talking about this stuff, especially when we're not talking about a user at Family Boards with exclusive information. Like if, you know, Nate the Hate went there and dropped a hidden post with exclusive details. We're not talking about that. We're talking about information in this case that's literally publicly available stuff. Uh, and this is beyond the fact it's being posted at a forum that's public regardless of the hidden post. Literally, you can register. It's free to register. There's no approval process to post there. You could just register right now and see all the hidden posts. It doesn't really, to me, uh, make a lot of sense why they treat things this way. And I feel like it's creating this disconnect and this elitism in the Nintendo fan community that I think we've all known exists, and it still exists in other parts. Reddit also really looks down on YouTubers as an example. And I just think it's not really productive. Uh, regardless, if you like the way I title things or you like the way that I present information, I try my best to my, the best of my capabilities and my knowledge to present to you guys fact-based information based on what I understand in ways that I hope you guys can understand. 
But I think there seems to be this this thing where, especially with YouTubers, the problem is that we make money on these videos, and that makes people upset regardless of the fact the money made is usually $20 or less, $50 on a very, very good, well-performing video. It's not life-altering types of money. Uh, in fact, the only reason I'm able to do YouTube full-time is because of the fan support we get on our live streams and through our memberships. We have 369 current members, actually 374 after last night, current paid members on our channel, in addition to obviously having super chats and stuff. And all of that is really why I'm able to do this full time. Uh, it's not really the revenue that I make on the videos, at least not at this point. Maybe someday I'll be a big enough YouTuber that the video revenue will outpace everything else, but that's just not reality. And I think even though we make money and you can argue that gives us incentive for clickbait and other things, uh, I also think that we just really enjoy having conversations about Nintendo. And it's disheartening um, that we create these communities like this to have these conversations and then outside noise comes in and just looks down. Um, I'm just, I'll, I'll just give you um, an example, and this is something that made me want to actually bring this up, is I've uh, seen in multiple places now over the last week, uh, people reference my community and the people that watch my videos as a bunch of idiots. And I take more offense to that than pretty much any criticism or personal attack against me, myself, my family, and my channel, because now you're coming after my audience and making assumptions about them when we're all just Nintendo fans trying to have fun. So this is sort of my plea. Uh, if any of these places watch this and they're probably just going to laugh at me, I think this level of elitism shouldn't really exist. None of us are better than each other. We're all just Nintendo fans having conversations about Nintendo news, leaks, hypotheticals, rumors, etc. cetera. Uh, and I think we should just be all inclusive. I don't know why we need to have this elitist attitude, like we're better than others. Um, I don't, think that's actually a thing. I, I personally don't think anyone's really better than somebody else in a natural sense, because I don't think any of us know each other that well to even come to conclusions like that. A lot of it's based on assumptions of public things that have nothing to do with what you know personally. Anyways, I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, I just wanted to get that out there because as we dive deeper into this and as we get closer to Switch 2, I think a lot of this elitism is going to keep cropping up, and I think it's just overall eroding what I feel is a mostly fantastic Nintendo community here on the internet. So uh, if you ever see stuff like that out there, guys, just kind of try to shrug it off and uh, don't take it so personal. Uh, we can't help that people behave that way. Thank you guys so much for being here, and I'll catch you in the next video.